Okay, so we need to look at um, the power equations and how they link to circuits and domestic electricity. So, um, let's take a very simple circuit. So, as we now know, or know from the circuits topic, little charge carriers are what carry the energy around the circuit. And if we deal with conventional current, they move from the positive end around the circuit back towards the negative end. Now, what's actually happening is the power supply if you like, is the thing that gives the push or the energy to these charge carriers. So it is the power supply, that is the thing that does work. So as far as the charge carrier is concerned, when they come out of the power supply, work has been done on the charge carrier by whatever the power supply is, if it's a battery or a cell or whatever. And that's actually what the whole thing about volts or potential difference is. Potential difference, remember, is the difference in energy per unit charge between two points in the circuit. We talk about it in terms of volts, but remember volts are also joules per coulomb. Or in other words, it is the amount of energy joules given to each single unit of charge, which is a coulomb. So as the charge carrier goes off around the circuit, when it gets to a component or part of a circuit that it has to get through, what happens is it ends up, if you like, giving some of that energy, some of its volts, some of its joules per coulomb to the thing that it goes through. And when you put a voltmeter across a component to measure the potential difference, what that's actually doing is going, how much energy per unit charge do we have before the device or the component? How much charge per unit en uh, energy per unit charge do you have afterwards? And what is the difference? And that is the potential difference or the volts or the joules per coulomb that's been used up or given to the component as the charge carry goes through. So when that happens, what's happening is work is being done by the charge carriers as they go through a component. That's how they get through. So you've got these two separate things. You've got work done on the charge carrier by a power supply to give it energy to make it flow in the first place. And then as it goes through various components in the circuit, you've got work done by the charge carriers and they are transferring energy to the component and then off they go around the rest of the circuit. There's some very, very simple equations to use with this. So, um, let's start off with the one that links energy, charge and potential difference. So the energy transferred, um, that could be on or by, depending on what's going on, is equal to the amount of charge you have multiplied by the potential difference. Uh, Simple wise energy transferred or occasionally you might see work done but work done is often only used really when we're talking about mechanical work done usually so you tend to use e in electrical circuits uh, charge is a capital q and potential difference as we know is a capital v so you have the equation the energy transferred is equal to the amount of charge flowing multiplied by the potential difference um, and this works both ways. This works for um, how much energy is being given or transferred to the charge when it comes out of power supply. But it also works the opposite way. It's how much energy is transferred by the charge when it travels through a component. Um, we can check the units and that will also make sense. So charge is measured in coulombs, capital C. Uh, potential difference V is measured in volts, which are also joules per coulomb. So I've got... On this side, I've got coulombs multiplied by joules divided by coulombs, so they're going to cancel. That just leaves me joules over here, and joules are the correct units of energy, so we know the equation is correct. Okay, so then we need to link energy with power. So, in all physics, not just circuits, power is simply the rate of work done, or the rate of energy transfer. So power is how much energy has been transferred every second, or um, if you prefer, joules per second, 
power, if you remember, was measured in something called watts, capital W. And we had the phrase, didn't we? What is a joule per second? And the answer is, uh, yes, it is. A watt is a joule per second. That also links to the equation because, equationally, power is simply the energy transferred divided by the amount of time that the energy is transferred for. So if we combine that and look at our circuits, uh, our circuit equations and the E equals QV, we can actually mess about with this quite a lot. So we know that energy is Q times V. So if we sub that in for here, we actually get power is QV over T. Now, that's actually not a very useful equation, but we have another equation that comes in there. We also know from circuits that Q, the charge that flows, is equal to the current, the rate of flow of charge, multiplied by time. That comes from, perhaps the other way of doing it is current is rate of flow of charge. So current in amps is how much charge flows in coulombs every second. So if we rearrange that, we get Q equals IT. So then we can take Q equals IT and sub that in there instead. And now we have power equals ITV over T. And as you can see there, the T is on top and underneath it cancels. And so we're left with the equation power is current times potential difference. Um, you'll often see it given as power equals VI. Obviously, it doesn't matter which around you do it. Mr. Cash likes this way because he likes to say PIV and it makes him smile. So, so far, we've gone from energy is charge times potential difference. And that's one that we definitely need to know and use. So that's one that's definitely worth learning. We can also then use the fact that we already know power is energy over time and that's one that you should already know anyway from the basic mechanics stuff we then combine the energy is charge times potential difference with power is energy over time and that gives us power is q v over t this one you don't really very often use so not often useful, only ever as a stepping stone to get to where we're going. Um, very occasionally you might see a combine these equations to prove that type of question where you have to then use that as a step along the way to show how you get to the equation P equals VI. But in fairness, that's um, right at the top end or possibly slightly into A level. So it's unlikely you'd have to deal with that. Um, we then, so from our P equals QV over T, we combine that with Q equals IT, which we already know from the circuit basics, and uh, which comes from that equation here. We combine all those together, and we end up with PIV, or P equals VI. And again, this is one of those that you need to know and learn. However, it doesn't quite stop there, because we also have Ohm's Law. We know V equals I times R, um, which actually comes from current is determined by the potential difference you have divided by the resistance you're trying to push that current through. So actually, there's several options of putting those back into this equation. So uh, one option is we could take I equals V over R, and we could sub that into here or into here and that would give us P equals V over R times V which equals V squared over R so we could do that but more usefully you take this equation you take V equals I R and you sub that into where the V is and then what you find instead is you get P equals I times IR because the IR is just the V 
and then that simplifies to p equals i squared r and that is the one that they want you to know and memorize and be able to use so you may find occasions where actually this is a quick and simple way to answer the question but they're not expecting you to know that they may expect you to work that out from other things they've given but they do expect you to know this one but it does just come from taking your p equals iv equation and combining it with your v equals ir equation so at this point it's worth putting all of those together so we have e equals qv which is new and you've not seen before you combine that with q equals it which you have seen before and combine again with power is energy over time so you obviously rearrange that which again you've seen before and that leads you to p equals iv um, but then you can combine that with ohm's law which again of course you already know and that can lead you to also having p equals i squared r and it is these three new equations that you need to learn and that's what we're going to focus on using next uh, let's do a quick couple of examples so um, let's say you have some appliance connected to the main supply um, so the potential difference of the main supply is 230 volts in the UK and the question could ask you for example how much energy is transferred when 13 coulombs of charge flows through the appliance so 13 coulombs of charge flows and they want you to work out how much energy has been transferred so this one is you've got V got Q and you're trying to find E. So that's straight into the E equals QV equation. Um, no messing about with units here because they're already in the units for you. So you've got 13 coulombs multiplied by 230 volts and that 2,990 joules. Uh, let's try another one. Um, so let's take another question where it says that there's um, something plugged in has a power um, has a power rating of 2.5 kilowatts. It's on the UK mains, so it has a potential difference of 230 volts. And the question is going to ask you how much current flows through the device, whatever the appliance is. So obviously we've got power, we've got P, we've got V, and we're trying to find I. So we're going straight from the P equals I V equation. We are trying to find I, so we're going to rearrange the equation for I. So I equals P over V. Uh, put the numbers in the right place. So the P is 2.5 kilowatts divided by 230 volts. However, kilowatts, killer means multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. So we put that into the number first. So it's 2.5 by 10 to the power of 3 watts divided by 230 volts we put that in the calculator that gives us an answer of 10.8695 etc and it's got the little hat over the 8 so it's obviously repeating we can't leave our answers like that in physics so press the little SD button again or round it yourself that will come to an answer of 10.9 and that answer is to three significant figures um, it's current so we need to make sure we put a unit there so it's 10.9 amps